This is Focus on Africa from BBC World News. I'm Sophie Ikenye. Our top stories. Tackling toxic max masculinity in DR Congo, we meet the men attempting to change attitudes. Equality, it is not possible. At no time in history has it ever happened. And I am Ferdinand Mondi in Johannesburg. And with just a week to the country's elections, we speak to some of the disenchanted voters. Also in the program, Casta Semenya gears up to run in Doha. But will it be one of her last races? The athlete has posted cryptic messages on social media that appear to suggest she's ready to walk away. And stepping up their plans, Nigeria announces several friendlies ahead of the Africa Cup of Nations. Thanks for joining us on Focus on Africa from BBC World News. BBC Africa's investigation program this week is looking at the topic of modern masculinity in Africa. Now, the Democratic Republic of Congo has some of the highest rates of sexual violence in the world. But a new approach is trying to tackle this by encouraging men to confront and question their toxic masculinity. And just a warning, you might find some of the issues discussed in this report disturbing. Without a job, you are not a man. A woman must humble herself and a man must respect his wife. Equality, it is not possible. At no time in history has it ever happened. According to one study, more than three million women in the DRC have been sexually abused by their partners. Julien's husband admits that he used to abuse her. Moise was a man. You have no brains. You are stupid. I will leave you and marry another woman. You have no manners. You embarrass me in front of other people. You don't deserve me. I should marry another woman. Having sex with her was like fighting. I thought she belonged to me. I could do whatever I wanted with her, whenever I wanted, and however I wanted. At one point, I turned around and gave her a small kick on the stomach. She was four months pregnant. She fell down immediately. When I checked, she was bleeding. Many men tell us I have raped using violence because rape is our reality here. In 2010, Ilo Alphonse co-founded a network to fight male violence. Baraza is like a place to come together. For us, the Baraza is a way to rewire men's brains. There is a crisis among the youth, especially for the boys. Young people do not have role models. There is no one to guide them into adulthood, to show boys how to become men. Aunts prepare girls to submit to violence. Because aunts tell girls who are going into marriage, you have to submit. Never say no when your husband asks for sex. Even if he beats you, you must take it. You have to endure it. It's a way of saying you are getting married, but there will be violence. Accept violence. Tu vas te marier, mais endure la violence. Accept la violence. Masculinité positive. Congo Men's Network. In Congo, music is an important communication tool. We are working with Mark El Sambo on a community awareness project. The goal is to educate a lot of men and boys. So both songs are focused on positive masculinity. Music of fait c'est une arme. Music is a weapon, a weapon that does not hurt physically, but touches the soul. 
men who used to be seen as violators of women's rights are now bringing change. Because when men change, it will immediately impact society. When this network came and started teaching us in the Baraza, everything changed. We now have a proper conversations. Our sexual relationship has improved a lot. Now, when I get home, I help her with the baby. I light up the fire to cook the meals. We help each other, and things go smoothly. Things are better. Love has turned around, and things are really good. Now, when I go to the farm, he helps me with the hoe or with the baby. Before, I was suffering. I used to do everything by myself. When I came from the farm, I cooked and I cleaned while he sat there. We would fight. There was no sex without fighting. If I was wearing shorts, he would rip them off. The people who started this group did something really good. We have a dream to reach 100% of Congolese men. We dream to see an end to all forms of violence in this country, so we can make this country livable for men, for women, for girls and for boys. Well, Ilo Alphonse, who we saw there in the clip, is the co-founder of Congo Men's Network, and he joins us now. I'm interested in your approach, which you call positive masculinity. But I'm just wondering, how does one unlearn what they've always known to be normal, so to speak? Mm, thank you very much for the question. Um, I think that uh, our work in, in, in this process is to facilitate these kinds of thinking where men who inherited these kinds of traditions and cultures that are really, uh, let's say, uh, violent. We, we, we help them to think a little bit about the, the past and all these violent behaviors so that uh, we can find a way where uh, we use nonviolent uh, um, attitudes. And uh, this is one way of helping men to be responsible of their actions and uh, behavior in, in their own lives. So. Our work is mostly focusing on facilitating this process. So, so how then do you do it? How, how practically uh, do you take care of it? Uh, you know, we, uh, uh, in the video, you, you, you'll see that we, we, is, we, we have these barrages. They are really very secure uh, spaces where men have, have time to, to speak about their own experiences. And our work is first to try to, uh, to recall, to... to, to, to to help men to remember, to remember their their, their, their past lives, to remember what they, they have been taught, what the elders told them, that a man should be tough, a man should be the, the, the breadwinner, the man should be strong in, in, in wherever, in, 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 in having sex, and in, yeah. So this is this is the, the, the things that men were, were taught. So our work is somehow to, to try and help them remember all this, Types of uh, of 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 of, of in, in a So, so you, you you so yeah, so you also basically give them some some safe spaces. How much does the environment contribute to these attitudes? I'm thinking about DR Congo, uh, given the fact that it's been a conflict-ridden country for years. Yes, for me, you know, um, uh, Congo is yes, I've been experiencing war for almost three decades now and for me I, I, um, yes uh, war war and uh, conflict is one of the vectors for of, of, of sexual violence but um i i think that you know me, mo, me, most men and boys when they 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 go into conflict they have these uh, traits they have these attitudes in them and the war for me is like a, an opportunity for them to express the power and to express this uh, this, let's say, dominance, uh, dominance, uh, uh, dominance needs that they have in them, and they say, okay, as I have a gun now, let me express myself because the gun shall speak on my behalf, and that's why you'll see that in most conflict areas in, in DRC, there are so many cases of 
of rape and sexual violence. It's only because men now have the gun and the that power mm. to express themselves using the force. All right. And and but I I cannot I cannot conclude here that war is is the only thing that increased the rate the the, the, the rate so, so of it's, it's, so it's just part 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 of the triggers. In law, we have to leave it there. But thank you for taking time to talk to us on focus in Africa. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, let's now take a quick look at other stories making the headlines across Africa. The Tanzanian businessman and media magnate Reginald Mengi has died in Dubai at the age of 75. Mr. Mengi rose from a poor family background to amass one of the largest fortunes in Africa with a business empire that included media companies, mining, and most recently cars and mobile phones. In Uganda, the opposition MP Bobby Wine has been released from prison on bail. The politician, whose real name is Robert Changulani, had been prosecuted for organizing a protest against a social media tax last year. His release comes as authorities ordered 13 media outlets to suspend staff for failing to meet the minimum broadcasting standards. Now, it's one year since violent protests in South Africa's north uh, western province raged over a perceived lack of basic services and corruption uh, in the region. Now, at the time, the protests raised serious questions about the functioning and state of democracy in the country. But with an election around the corner, has anything changed? Let's now go straight to Johannesburg, where the BBC's Ferdinand Omondi is standing by. Sophie, you are right. The ruling party, ANC, is facing serious questions on its democratic credentials. As the vote approaches, indeed, in Mahiking last year, there were prolonged protests against an apparent lack of government services, which eventually pushed the premier out of office. Now, these service delivery protests have become a very regular news item in South Africa's news sources. And now, a year on, I went back to Mahiking to gauge the mood of the electorate as the vote approaches. At the age of 25, Dumisa Modise is as old as South Africa's democracy. He took part in last year's protest here in Mahikeng demanding change, but he is not interested in the elections. And why should I vote? I don't see the reason to vote. For how long have you been voting? There's no difference. Right now I'm 25 years old, I've passed my metric, there is no work. Now I'm, I'm hustling with my friend at the car wash. We are trying to make uh, some money for a living. So there's no reason for me to vote, and I'm not going to vote at all. His anger is shared among many youths here in the Northwest. Mponeng is a young mother of two. She fills this tank through a private provider to get all the water the household needs as local services are lacking. Mponeng isn't happy she has to pay for essential services which the local government should be providing. Hi, we are struggling. I don't want to lie about it. We are struggling a lot. We don't have water here. We don't have electricity. We use inverters. We use generator. And you know fuel is very expensive so we spend a lot of money. The inadequate provision of essential services in parts of Mahikeng sometimes pours onto the streets quite literally. This is one of several dumping sites we have come across driving through this township in Mahikeng. To the visitor, it is a surprising eyesore. To the locals, it is visual evidence of that poor service delivery they are talking about. Several independent studies have shown a growing number of people are disappointed in the ruling ANC party going into the elections. Surprisingly, statistics show that many of the disenchanted would rather not vote at all instead of voting for the opposition. South Africans still contrast ANC governance with the 55 years of the National Party apartheid rule, right, where there was a certain, um, you know, relationship that or a certain disconnect between the black majority and the white minority, right? And secondly, you also have a challenge now with the opposition not really positioning themselves as an alternative. So they don't seem to have a clear identity about what their programs are, what their ideology is, and what their aims are for the province itself. Farina Mundi, BBC News, Mahikeng, South Africa. 
Now, Sophie, the worrying trend here is that not only are the people losing faith in government, but also those disenchanted people are losing faith in democracy. In the Northwest alone, only 18% have faith in democracy, and it means a lot of them may not even vote. Countrywide, there are 10 million people who are eligible to vote and who would not even register, and it is projected that another 5 million who have registered to vote may not even turn out at the ballot box. Sophie? All right, so of course, we'll be waiting to see how that election goes there. Ferdinand Omode for us in Johannesburg. Thank you. This is Focus on Africa from BBC World News. It's still to come, training the men in black, uh, putting referees through their paces ahead of the Africa Cup of Nations. Find out more in sports. I'm Sophie Ikenye and you're watching Focus on Africa from BBC World News. The top stories on this program, men in the Democratic Republic of, of Congo are attempting to change attitudes in their communities as they tackle toxic masculinity. And with less than a week to go until South Africa's elections, many citizens are choosing not to vote and questions are being raised over the state of democracy. Olympic champion Kasta Semenya has arrived in Doha for the first of 2019 Diamond League meetings tomorrow. The athlete has been posting cryptic messages on social media that seem to suggest she's ready to walk away. Now, on Wednesday, she lost her appeal against new rules on testosterone levels in female athletes. Sports correspondent Richard Conway reports. Kasta Semenya arriving in Qatar last night, ready to do what she does best run. Casta, uh, just BBC, would you like to talk about the verdict? She will have to take Caster medication to reduce her testosterone level if she is to continue competing in the 800 metres. Opting not to speak, she's likely to do her talking on the track tomorrow night in what could potentially be her final race. Unfortunately, you know, for her, she will now actually have to either, she'll have to make a decision to either start taking the medication to reduce her testosterone levels or not be allowed to compete, and that's a difficult situation to be in. Could retirement then be imminent? Taking to social media today, she posted a quote, knowing when to walk away is wisdom, being able to is courage. Walking away with your head held high is dignity. A further message read, that's me and always will be, I'm finished. If she does walk away from the sport, then scrutiny on athletics world governing body and its new regulations will increase its president continues to back its stance. Athletics has two classifications. It has age, uh, it has gender. We are fiercely protective about both, and I'm really grateful uh, that the Court of Arbitration has upheld that principle. The complex issue has split opinion amongst fans of the sport, but there was support today from some of the South Africans' fellow athletes, including Team GB sprinter Dina Asher-Smith. Cast is my friend, so I hope that she's going to be OK. Casta Semenya wants to compete freely. However, there are increasing signs the reigning world and Olympic champion's career could yet be brought to a halt. Richard Conway, BBC News. Well, the BBC's World Service Athletics commentator, Ed Harry, is in Doha. Ed, has Casta said anything at all to the media, uh, of course, aside from the tweets we are seeing on social media? No, she hasn't, and that was myself at the airport late last night trying to get some comment from her. We still only have the written statement and, as you say, those somewhat cryptic messages from social media. But this track behind me is really what it's all about. She is in Doha to race the 800 metres here in around about 24 hours' time, and this same track will then host the World Championships at the end of September and at the start of October. The big question is whether Casta Semenya will be part of those World Championships, whether she will be able to come here and defend her 800 metres title. We expect her to appeal against this CAS ruling in the IAAF's favour. If that isn't successful, though, as you heard in that piece, she would have to take medication to, uh, to, uh, to, to bring down her naturally high testosterone levels. There is no indication that she wishes to do that. So this race here tomorrow evening, which will happen before those regulations uh, uh, are applied as of next Wednesday onwards, really could be the last time we see her racing at the elite level for quite some time or perhaps for good. Uh, I'm just wondering because uh, you just mentioned the crypt cryptic uh, tweets that she's been posting on social media. Should we be reading anything into them? 
I think if you look back through Casta Semenya expressing herself on social media platforms, this is how she does it. It's always a parable or a phrase or something which sums up how she is feeling at the time. Another example of that is on Sunday morning, she posted a picture from the CAS hearing from her legal team leading, leaving the building on one of those days back in February. And Castor was smiling and that made many of us think, does she know something? Has she perhaps won this CAS decision? She hadn't. And now we have these far more gloomy ones. And how much uh, more, uh, more, more down can you be than the one which uh, in her native tongue said, I'm finished? Yes, she could move up to the 5,000 metres, but I suppose it's about how many compromises any individual is willing to endure. It's far too early to, I think, say we're not going to see her again, but worrying time. She's dominated for the best part of a decade over 800 metres, hasn't lost a major 800 metres race for more than three and a half years. The very idea she couldn't be back here in September is a concerning one for many. All right, Ed Harry for us there in Doha. Thank you. You're watching BBC Focus on Africa. It's time now for some sport. Peter. Many thanks, Sophie. And Nigeria will face Zimbabwe and Senegal in friendlies ahead of this year's Africa Cup of Nations. That's according to the head of the Nigeria Football Federation. The Super Eagles will host the Warriors on June the 8th in Asaba before facing the continent's top side Senegal in Egypt eight days later. Three-time African champions Nigeria opened their campaign against Burundi on June the 22nd and will also play Guinea and debutants Madagascar in the group. Meanwhile, these guys will play a major role in the tournament. They are, of course, the referees, and they've been training hard in Egypt ahead of the kickoff in, on the 21st of June. We want VAR to be able to assist us during the Nations Cup and that's why CAF has organised this training camp and it's not the first one, there was another one in South Africa. We're here in Morocco and that's fine. Today we did some tests, we started with a medical test, we also refreshed our laws of the game, we also did an offside test to see how we can identify offsides. Now, the semi-finals of the Europa League take centre stage today with Chelsea away at Eintracht Frankfurt and Arsenal at home to Spanish side Valencia. Manager Maurizio Sarri says Chelsea are in trouble with their defence. Antonio Rudiger has undergone knee surgery, while fellow defender Gary Cahill has suffered an Achilles injury, leaving just two fit centre-backs. Eintracht Frankfurt, currently fourth in the Bundesliga, are unbeaten at home in 11 games in the Europa League, winning nine of them. In tonight's other game, Arsenal manager Unai Emery goes against his former club, who he led to Champions League qualification on three consecutive occasions. But he insists that's all history. For me, it's the present. The football, the past is can learn, can uh, have uh, took experience, and after this, uh, do a new way, a new way, a new history, and I want to to create here a new history with uh, with all the competition. And now it's Europe League. And the Euroleague is our way for one title and our way for the possibility to go to Champion League. Well, now, Emery there. And Sophie, that's just sports. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Well, before we go, how much would you pay for this? It's a drawing by Nelson Mandela and it will be auctioned in New York later today. It's called Cell Door and was drawn from memory following his years of imprisonment on Robben Island. Ten original drawings from South Africa's former president were then reproduced for the series My Robin Island and Reflections of Robin Island. Uh, they were inherited by Dr. Pumla Makaziwe Mandela. And experts believe it could sell for as much as $90,000. Quite something. Well, don't forget you can get in touch with me and the rest of the Focus on Africa team on Twitter. I'm at CK. And of course, you can keep up to date with all the latest news and current affairs on Africa. That's on bbc.com forward slash Africa. That's all from the program. Thanks for your company.